Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. We have been working on this F14 Tomcat pinball machine for quite a while now. Yeah, and we've done tons of videos on it. Uh, and we're just working our way through it step by step by step by step by step. So this is the next in a long line of them. If you haven't seen the other ones, go back and check them out. When we last left off, we had fixed all of the light bulbs on the play field. They are all working. And that's after we had fixed the CPU, the power supply, the, all of the battery damage on the CPU. Uh, put the, worked on the display and then replaced the display. Worked on the the uh, beacon motor at the top and all of that stuff and did some cosmetic stuff like uh, replacing the legs things like that right so we've got all of the light bulbs working we got on, the, on uh, uh, the last video we got all the solenoids working and then the special solenoids were screwed up so we got the special solenoids working and we got the flippers working and now we're up to we need to get these switches working which will leave us with pretty much the only thing left, well, there's still, there's always something left, but one of the only things left will be to clean the play field finally. So uh, on this video, we're going to figure out what's going on with the switches and then do some other little minor stuff. So the first thing that we need to do is, on the last one when we left off, we've got all the solenoids working, but there was a wire that they had taped together in the back that was supposed to go through a connector. So we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put that wire back in the connector and put new pins on that. Um, and the reason I'm going to go do, ahead and do that now is because we also have to do that to a connector in the back box that the switches all run through. So I'll show you that too. So uh, let me get my connector stuff and I'll show you uh, how to take care of weird problems like that where people have hacked things and you're trying to put it back how it was. By the way, right here at the beginning of this video, since you know it's going to be so cool, make sure to give us a thumbs up. When you give our video a thumbs up, YouTube circulates it around and their algorithm sends it out to more people. So that really helps our channel out when you do that. Thank you. So this is the wiring that we're talking about. It, it's down in the bottom, but I've got it pulled up on the playfield so that we can get to it better. They, they had taking, taken the purple and yellow wire out of this connector. The pins aren't even in there. So they actually kind of did that kind of good. Maybe they fell out though. Um, and then they attached a jumper lead to it with electrical tape and then had the jumper lead just on a coil lug underneath the play field. And the reason they had done all that is because the Yagoff kicker over here, uh, the wires were ripped off of it. So, I don't know. But we're going to put this back. So, I'm going to go ahead and take all this tape off and let's see what's underneath it all. <laughs> Look at this crap. Look at this. Let me save that for later. You know, I can use that. I don't throw stuff away, people. So the pins somehow came out of the thing and then they cut the pins off and they just twisted them together and put a, a alligator clip on it. They did put the electrical tape on this side though, so I mean, you know, it could have worked. Okay, uh, you might be wondering about how they're slightly different. Like, see this one is purple with a yellow stripe and this is purple with a yellow ribbon kind of going around it. But they do that a lot. It, that's basically the same thing, at least on this machine. And we already, on the previous video, we traced down where all the wires go, and it is supposed to be connected. It was just when it came out of this connector, the wire was slightly different on the other side, because it's not the same actual wire, you know. Okay, so I'm going to go get my little pins and my pin uh, crimpers and show you how we do that, and uh, how you can do that on your machine if you have stuff broke like this in the connectors. So these are the little connectors that we need for that thing. On this particular machine, these are a little smaller than they usually are. Did I just drop one? Did you see one fall? We'll find it when we clean the, pinball, the play field. Um, the size that you need for this particular one are .062 inch. <laughs> Obviously a millimeter that they've converted over. Uh, .062 and then some of them are .093. 
So most of the pinballs use .093 for all of the Molex connectors, but on on the uh, on some of them, if the connector is a little smaller, the pins are .062, and so it's that series or whatever. So look at that back in the connector where it's supposed to go. Doesn't it look wonderful? One last thing, people. Now, where can you get connectors and things like that? Our favorite place to buy things, like for pinball machines, is a place called GreatPlainsElectronics.com. Great Plains Electronics. It's spelled just like it's like it sounds. The guy that runs that site is named Ed. I don't really know Ed, although we've bought a bunch of stuff from him, so he's not paying me to say this or anything. But he kind of caters to the pinball community. So he sells stuff that you would find that you need in a pinball machine. Little connectors and IC chips and things like that. Like, for instance, he sells the big capacitor that's in the bottom of all of the uh, uh, this Atari, Atari arcade games in the power supply that they call the big blue capacitor. He sells those and things like that. So um, if there's something you need for a pinball machine, usually he's got it. Ironically, I don't know if he has .062 connectors, but he does have a lot of stuff like that. So, um, so if you're looking for something on your machine, weird like that, go check that out. If you can't get it there, my favorite place to order it that's like a big place is uh, Newark.com. N-E-W-A-R-K, Newark.com. They have a bunch of stuff. They're like Mauser and Jamico and stuff like that, but I like Newark. Mainly because they're in uh, Gaffney, South Carolina, so they're not too far from me. So if I order stuff, I get it the next day with regular shipping. So that's pretty cool. But we got our wire put back in and took care of that problem. And that's the only one I saw in it that was cut. Uh, but we've got to do uh, one more wire before we... Uh, one more connector before we start checking our switches. There's some other stuff we have to do. Like we have to put fuses on our bridge rectifiers and stuff like that. But the other one that we have to do before we can test the switches is this connector right here. Now, if you didn't see the earlier videos, we did extensive repair on this because of all the uh, alkaline damage. And one of the connectors was really messed up, so we had to replace the male connector here. And this is the one that does the switches. So, uh, four, five, six, seven, it's a nine pin connector. And so this is the plug that plugs into it, right? But we don't want to plug it in because look how nasty it is. Here you go, I'm gonna go right in so you can see Look at all that corrosion and crap. Look at that. Ugh, we don't want to plug that into our board. That's not going to work. We can't leave it like that. So we're going to put a new connector on this. Now, this is a .156 connector, which is the, spa the distance between the pins, the spacing on it. And I do have a bunch of these because we replace these all the time. So. I'll show you how we do it. So first thing that I need is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, it's a nine pin. I need a nine pin housing um, that will plug into that uh, the male pins there. So let me go grab one of those. So I've got a whole box of connectors and a little nine pin new Molex connector we'll put on there. And look at this. This is one of my latest ac uh, acquisitions. Polarizing keys. That's the part number if you want it. It's just a little piece of plastic that goes in there to block one of the holes. You know, we're trying to do it official. And then um, you can get different crimps. So this particular one, Molex 08520113. Is for wiring that's between 20 and 18 AWG, blah, 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 blah. And they are Trifuricon. So, what that means is these little connectors, if you look really close, they have three sides on them. See that right there? So, when they go on the pin, they actually grab the pin from three different sides. And it makes a real tight connection. Some people swear by them. Personally, I think it's a little bit overkill, but this is another type you can get. These are, uh, what is the part number on these? Molex. 
that part number up here. 00852-0072. Okay. And so these are the same thing. They're just, they're not three-sided. So they only have one side that hits the pin. It only hits it on one side. The trifurcons are just like this, but they have a little wing on both sides, so it grabs the side of the pin, too. You can get whatever you like. You can have whatever you like. Um, you can get those from GreatPlainsElectronics.com. Now, Ed doesn't know I'm doing this video, and he's surely not paying me, but it's a good place to get stuff. Go check it out. Okay, so I'm just going to carefully cut each wire. And then one by one, slide them into the back, crimp them on and slide them into the back of here and replace that connector with a brand new one, brand new connections on the wire. And let me show you my crimpers that I use. I like these kind of like this that are ratcheting. So you can, I've got the jaws reversed because I'm left-handed. <laughs> But they come with the numbers on this side, so you can go with your right hand. But basically, these jaws, they have a little hip in there where it, it crimps both connections at the same time on the terminal. See, one's bigger and one's smaller. The one that's bigger goes around the insulation. The one that's smaller just goes around the wire. And you can put it in like this and see it stays. It's ratcheting. And you can put your little connector in there, and it will hold it in place. And then you slide your wire in and pull it in. And if you don't do it enough, it doesn't release. So the only way to get it to release is to pull it all the way in to where it's properly crimped. And then it will release and the wire comes out. These are real cool. They're not even that expensive. They're like $20 or something. I've got a link to these on our website. You can go buy these if you want. Go to lionsarcade.com. There's a parts uh, thing up at the top. If you click that, we've got stuff like this on there that we recommend. Uh, links to it so you can buy it on Amazon and things like that. And it gives us a little uh, referral fee for sending you from our website. And then also on that page, we've got like some of our t-shirts and coffee mugs and stuff like that for sale if you want to support the channel. So I'm going to go ahead and change those wires and put that plug on and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so that's how our new connector ended up looking. Everything's cool, fits on there well. And we have it in test. We're going to go through and test our switches. Let me put the translate back in. Is this something that can be done with one hand? Possibly. If you folks help me. All right. All right, all right, all right. So I have our trusty little notepad here. One of our viewers made us this. Look, it's a little caricature of me working on pinball machines. Look how cool. Look, I've got my screwdriver in my right hand, and I'm re reaching in to mess with a, with a relay or something with my left hand. Okay, so we're going to go into the switch test. By the way, all that noise that you hear from the uh, the bulbs when they're all on, we'll see if we can mess with that later. Okay, so switch levels. It's basically saying these are stuck right now. So it's the right ball trough, the left ball trough, the left center ball trough, I guess that's what it's saying, and the right center ball trough. So there's four balls in the machine. It's basically saying that they're sitting on four switches and it can see all of them. So we can go to the next test here, which is the switch edges test. So now we can press the switches and see if they work. So for instance, if I hit this one, it's the right flip lane switch. Okay, and the one next to it, it's the right drain. So that one's working, but not very well. So we'll say, 
left flipper lane. Probably just needs cleaned. Um, the rescue one. The left green. Okay, that's cool. I don't know if it can do um, the slings because it's the special solenoids. Whoa! Okay, so the sling, so basically when it, you know, we did the special solenoids on the previous video. When you hit that switch, it immediately fires the solenoid, and that switch doesn't actually connect to the CPU. But when the solenoid fires, it makes the switch under the playfield close, and that switch is connected to the CPU, and that's the one where it scores. So, uh, right sling, that one's a little touchy, left sling. you get it going. Definitely needs cleaned. Left sling. So basically the contacts are just old and dirty. We'll get them. Uh, we don't even have everything on the play field because we started taking that ramp off because we had to fix that coil. On a previous video, if you didn't see that, go back and check it out. Okay, so we've got the T-O-M stand-ups. They're all working just fine. Let's try these. Perfect, perfect. Both of these. Right center target. Okay, so left center target, I would assume. Left center target. And people, don't worry. I'll be around later to translate all this for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. kind of feel like I'm like messing with an 80s synthesizer. Uh, okay, that's that. Now these, I'm trying not to get pinched. You don't think it's going to get me, do you? Left center eject. Right center eject. Pop bumper. It's another special solenoid. Okay, it's fine. Oh, that's pretty good, people. All right, and then let's see. There's a spinner here. It seems to be working, but dirty. Spinner. Spin, spin, baby, spin. And then there's a gate behind it. It ain't working. Let's say right gate. All these probably just need cleaned. But you may get to a situation where if you have a bunch that don't work at all, they may be on the same switch strobe line. And there's something wrong with the CPU. Left gate. Ain't doing a thing. Or it might be like a broke wire. Left gate, nothing. Completely dead. Okay, uh, what else have we got? We got these stand ups up here. T. So that one's jumping. M is not working. Top L M target. Top left M target. Mm -hmm. 
top right C target. The A seems to be working. And our T is working. Okay. Nothing there. That's about all of them. We've got the, the Yagoff kicker. Again, though, that's a special one. Trying not to get. Oh, it's not a special one now that I think about it. Alright, so that one's working, but touchy. Yagoff kicker. Okay. So the uh, there's also a couple on the ramp, but we don't have it plugged in. Um, there's three. Since these are micro switches, you can't really clean those. Usually you have to replace them, but sometimes it's just they're bent wrong or something. Okay, uh, let's see. We've got credit button works fine. And then the two uh, coin switches. Remember, on an earlier video, they had that all wired up uh, to a coin meter, so I think those are disconnected now, so we'll have to fix those. Left coin, right coin. Okay. Mm, what else am I thinking? Am I missing? Uh, it might be, oh, there's another one down in there. Can we get to it? It's fine. <laughs> that was when we took that plastic shield off. Okay, that's good. Look, here's another one. Switches everywhere, people. Ramp entry. That one's fine. Um, there's going to be one up there, too. Somewhere. It has to know that the pinball has somehow got up there. Or do it. How does it know that the ball went up there? Oh, yeah. So basically, the up kicker itself, when the ball lands on it, it can tell. All right, I think that's all of them. I don't see any other ones. Okay, so we got this whole list here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and clean all of these and see if that makes it better. Um, so we're just going to look and see if they're real dirty. Now, on, on a, on a uh, solid-state pin like this, you don't want to use a file or anything like that because you'll uh, um, those contacts don't have a lot of voltage going through them. They're just low voltage, 5 volt, um, or I guess it's 5 volts. It's low voltage, so... You, Basically, they just need to be clean. You don't need to, uh, you won't have any arcing or anything like that. On the flipper into stroke switches or the flipper switches on the cabinet, you want to file them because they actually have the voltage running through them. But on these, since it's part of the switch matrix, it's just five volts where it's just monitoring the line basically to see when it's grounded. So, um, so we're just going to try to clean it with just like uh, rubbing a piece of paper or a little bit of a business card or something like that through it. So I'm going to see if I can clean them up a little bit and see if that gets uh, any of them back working. I think it'll get most of them working, but it looked like there were several that weren't even trying to work. So they may be misadjusted, or we may have a line uh, that's completely not working of five or six of them in a row. But uh, let me start cleaning them, and then uh, I'll see if I can uh, narrow this list down a little bit and get down to the ones that actually need some repair. So this is the right slingshot we were talking about. So these are the switches that go up to the rubber. So when the ball hits that, it needs to be able to fire this really quick. So they thought that the CPU wouldn't have time to think about it and interpret the switch and then signal the, the uh, coil to do it. So they made what, the, what we talked about in the previous video, special solenoids, that the switch immediately turns on the coil, basically. Um, 
through a transistor on the board, but it doesn't. The CPU doesn't have to have anything to do about it. So the CPU doesn't actually see that switch close on the rubber ring. It pulls this in, and then that ma it makes that switch close. See how it's got the switch held open right now? Well, when this pulls in, if I can do it, it makes the switch close. So it was just dirty. I cleaned up the switch and got that working and the left one. So the left flipper return lane is that one and it was just dirty. Now we're good. The left center stand up switch, the one in the middle, is this one. So this one was working and this one wasn't, but if you look there's a little daisy chain wire here that's broke. So I need to solder that back on and that should fix that one. Okay, so the Yagoff kicker, it's hard for you to see, but it's that flat blade down in there, just dirty. The stand-up, whoa, I hit the flipper. <laughs> the stand-up uh, here is another broken wire. The stand-up here is another broken wire. So the little yellow jumper wires down there have broken just like this, uh, this one in the middle here. So uh, I've got three of them I have to wire back. Um, oh, and the spinner and the uh, gates are these little things here. A wire goes through the play field and connects to a, a big flat blade that's pulled up connecting to switch, you know, the switches together. Um, so uh, they were just dirty. So those three are fine, the two gates and the spinner. So I don't have any that are CPU problems. They're all broken wires or dirty switches. So that's pretty cool. But we do have to figure out the coin door ones. So we'll figure that out. But um, let me let me solder these three wires back, and then we should be able to lay the playfield back down and test the, those few that we had problems with before and see if they're working better now. We're going to test those again now that we've got them fixed. This is another thing uh, on the Playmatic machine that we did recently. Uh, I was talking about how the rivets break on the switches. Well, this is a stand-up switch for the slingshot, and the rivets had broken on it, too, on this Williams. The difference is, on these, the holes are big enough that you can actually put a bolt through it and bolt it back to the bracket. But on the Playmatics, the holes are so small, you can't really do that. But I had another one anyway, so I just swapped it out. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to check the stand-up switches and stuff that didn't work before. So this one didn't work. Very cool. These up here, we had some that didn't work. D O M C A T Tomcat. Our gate didn't work. Now it does. This gate didn't work. Now it does, and the spinner didn't work. The spinner, you gotta adjust these sometimes, so it may still have some issues, but whenever we take the playfield apart, we'll fix that. Uh, and then the the Yagoff, <laughs> the Yagoff kicker. Kill Jen Yagoff. Um, this one. And then uh, the actual kickers, let's see if they're doing their thing. Whoa, it's kinda hard to. Okay, that's that one, and then, folks, I think we got all of our switches working. All right. Oh, except the coin door ones, so we got to mess with that a little bit. So I got to look on the in the manual and see how that's supposed to be wired up. They cut them and put new ones in and stuff because they put a meter in. So on one of our earlier videos, we took that all loose, so now these aren't connected anymore. Um, but I should just be able to j connect a couple wires together and make that happen. But first, I'm going to look in the manual and see what wires are supposed to be where. So this is the meter that they had mounted in it. It had 17,595 plays on it. They had a little board added in with a little relay. And um, apparently this was just, you know, an operator added, it, operator added this so that they would have a physical meter instead of the uh, software meter inside the bookkeeping. But they did it pretty clean. They had a little Molex plug with some extra wiring and stuff that um, attached to the uh, the original wiring for the coin mix. And then they had wires they had added and put real nice into the loom to go and, and trigger the meter. But 
I'm taking all that crap off. I want it back kind of how it originally was. But they didn't really cut anything. They just kind of attached to what was already here. So uh, this stuff can all be put back. So they've they've crimped the uh, the grounds all together. I can take that back loose. There's my white and blue, which is the wiring for the left one. And this white and yellow looks like it's been cut a little short, but um, that's the wiring for the for this one. We should be able to make it work. And uh, we can take all of this stuff off and get it back where it looks real clean and it's back how it originally was. And then the CPU should be able to see those switches. So uh, let me clean this up a little bit and then we'll try the coin door switches again. Okay, we're back in switch test. Left coin switch. Right coin switch. So we cleaned it up a little bit. Those were a little short, but it'll be all right. You know, usually your coin mix in there anyway, so. Okay, so that's that. Guess what? All of the switches work. All of the switches work. Isn't that fantastic? All of the switches work. Alright folks, we're going to talk about one last thing on this video. So we've got all the lights working. You may have noticed that there's a crazy hum as the lights uh, go through, but you can't hear it right now. Listen, listen real careful and you can barely hear it. So th I, there's really no way for me to present this to you, but if you listen, I'll, I'll get you close to the speaker. You should be able to hear it a little bit because it's just natural on a System 11, but listen to this. So if you can just barely hear that, that's normal. But you, if you go back and watch earlier in the video, you could hear it a lot. It was really loud. And this is really common on System 11s especially, but a lot of different machines. So why does it do that and how do you fix it? It's because you don't have all of your boards grounded properly. If you look, every board in the back box has screws all the way around the edge. Unfortunately, some of even the new power supplies, I won't name names, <laughs> but uh, some of the new power supplies, if you just swap out the old one and put a brand new one in, they actually add some, uh, buzz where you hear more of it. By the way, I haven't touched the volume control or anything. It'll start doing a track here in a minute and you'll see. Um, but if you put a screw in every hole, see how that one's brand new? That's an original one. These usually have screws missing. So the soundboard had one missing. Um, and then this big MPU board has actually eight screws holding it to the back box. And this whole top corner up here is, is uh, what makes the background sound. So what happens is, if you don't have all the screws in it, this board is so big that it, it gets a different ground. Um, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a, a uh, engineer, so I can't properly explain it. But basically, the you know, if you've got if you're running something at five volts or twelve volts, you know the amp. If you're running something at five volts or twelve volts, that's based off of zero volts, which is the ground. Well, if, if everything's not tied together, the ground is at a slightly different level and you get this ground loop. And it can even happen on things like this with a big old board like this. The ground may be different at that end of the board. The ground may be different at that end of the board than this end of the board. And so if you're, uh, the, the way that they get around this is the backboard is, is a big metal plate. And all of these boards are attached to that metal plate with those screws so that the ground right here is the same as the ground right here, which is the same as the ground right here, which is the same as the ground right here. You know what I mean? So they use that big piece of metal to ground everything out. And so if those screws are not just for mounting, they're used to ground as well. So if you look at that one right there, see the little, see how the solder uh, mask is gone around the screw so that you have the metal of the PCB connected to the screw which is then connected to the the grounding post which is then connected to that big metal board 
can see that one's the same. That one's the same. So those screws are not just to mount it, those screws are to, uh, are to ground it as well. So it's pretty quiet whenever you've got that right, okay? So we'll go in and do our sound test again. Nice clear sound, but buzzing just enough to make remind you it's from the 80s. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. Let's turn it up a little bit so we can hear how clear it sounds. So, and you can hear that it's dead quiet if there's no lights on. I can't hear it at all. Um, so now that we've turned it up, let's see how bad it is. I mean, you can just barely hear it. So you can always hear it just a little bit, but you got to be right up on it. It's got to be dead quiet to hear anything. That's how it should be. So if you got it louder than that, you still got some kind of ground problem somewhere. Sometimes it's like the caps and stuff, but 95% of the time you got a bunch. 95% of the time you got a bunch of screws missing. So check that out if you've got that problem. All right, folks. So. Uh, I think that's it for today. I got the next video. We got to take the playfield all apart. We're down to working on the playfield. Here it comes. It's going to be awesome. We've we've screwed around and got a game that actually works. Um, we just got to get it where it works better. <laughs> where the playfield. I can't really play it right now because. <laughs> Look at that. That's what they've been rolling across the play field of this baby. What do you think that's been doing to the play field? Alright, so we can't play it, folks. I could put brand new balls in it, but then they'll get dirt and crap all over them because the play field is so dirty. So on the next video, we'll fix that up. So we appreciate everybody hanging out with us. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far as we work through it. You think we can clean this play field up? I think it's going to be just fine. So make sure to leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Hey, give us a thumbs up because if you do that, it, it sends our video all around YouTube. The algorithm likes it and everything. And it says, oh, hey, this is a cool channel. Let's suggest this to people that may have never heard of it before. So we're trying to get new viewers, you know. 
So we appreciate everybody doing that. And leave your comments down below what you think so far. And make sure to check out our brother channel, my brother Donnie. Literally, he is my brother. And uh, if you like watching us work on old pinball machines, you may like watching he and I work on uh, some old buildings that we bought. We bought a couple old buildings in a downtown area of uh, a small town near here. And we've been fixing them up, trying to help revitalize the downtown area. So go check that out. It's really fun. We have a lot of fun over there. He does a bunch of other stuff, too. He does some farming stuff and working on vehicles and all kinds of coolness. So make sure to check that out. It's my brother, Donnie. The link is down below. And we appreciate everybody that's been using the Amazon links. If you don't know about that, down below there are links to Amazon. If you click those links uh, and you're going to go buy something on Amazon anyway, click our link first and it gives me a tip for sending you there. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. People have been buying all kinds of stuff lately. So thank you for that. And uh, we will see you on the next video. Hope you've enjoyed it.